2022 Kawasaki vs. 650, First Ride Review My 2009 Kawasaki vs. 650 was one of the best utilitarian two-wheelers I've owned, but since I'm always putting miles on test bikes, I hardly ever rode it. When I realized I'd added only 500 miles to the odometer in five years, a deep sense of shame prompted me to sell it. After listing it on Facebook Marketplace, it was gone in a flash. Due to the high prices for used motorcycles right now, I earned a small profit, about a dollar for every mile I put on it. Flash forward a few months and I'm wending my way through the twisty interior of San Diego County aboard a 2022 Kawasaki vs. 650. It's the $9,999 LT version with hard saddlebags and handguards, which only comes in metallic spark black metallic flat spark black this year. The base model is available in the same color for $8,899, or in candy lime green metallic flat spark black metallic spark black for $9,099. Not surprisingly, the 2022 upgrade is a much better motorcycle than my just-sold 2009 model, but they still have a lot in common despite 13 years of separation. The seating position, performance, and overall essence of the motorcycle remain virtually unchanged, but a few key aspects go a long way toward improving the bike's desirability. New for 22 is a full-color 4.3-inch TFD display that is a major improvement over the previous instrument panel, and light years beyond the one on my 09 model. The layout of information is modern and clean, blending everything, the gear position indicator, fuel gauge, tack, speedo, clock, trip meter, etc., into a centrally located format. A rider can choose between a black or white background, and the screen brightness automatically adjusts to ambient light levels. Simultaneously depressing two analog buttons on the display allows a Bluetooth connection to be established between the Versus and Kawasaki's Rideology smartphone app. The app features a useful and handy maintenance log, general bike info, and the ability to record rides as well as share them with others. During the ride, when the bike and app are talking to one another, the TFD display will notify the rider when a new call or email has been received. The part of my ride recorded with the Rideology app showed that I traveled 79 miles for 1.34 hours from Orange to San Diego counties at an average speed of 54 miles per hour. The map, however, displayed a straight line from point A to point B, not an accurate GPS mapping of the twists and turns. My old Versus windscreen was adjustable only if I were willing to remove the four bolts necessary to position it differently, which rarely, if ever, happened. The inefficiency of the process meant a rider found a likable position for the windscreen and that's where it stayed. The new Versus features an easily adjustable windscreen that can be raised and lowered to four different settings over a 3-inch range. It's a two-handed affair with one hand depressing the lock button while the other moves the windscreen, but it's worth the small effort. The upper position deflects wind quite well while the low position puts the rider more in the wind stream. The new windscreen is the cherry atop a redesigned upper fairing that shares a family resemblance with its liter bike counterpart, the Versus 1000. The sides of the new cowling are ducted to move air around the rider while the dual headlights are now bright, low wattage LEDs. The rear of the Versus matches the front with aggressively pointy style and a new lead tail light. Anti-lock brakes now come standard on all Versus 650 models, as does traction control. The 649 cubic centimeters liquid-cooled parallel twin powering the Versus isn't a tire shredder, when we dyno tested a 2020 Versus 650, it sent 63 horsepower and 43 pound-foot of torque to the rear wheel, but it can certainly break traction given enough throttle when leaned over. TC has two settings, with the first being less intrusive and the second providing a more conservative safety net that should prove beneficial to newer riders or experienced ones caught in low traction conditions. If desired, traction control can be switched off entirely via a switch located on the left switch pod. Kick stand up and traveling south on Interstate 5 toward San Diego, the Versus felt like a comfortable and familiar old shoe. Exiting the slab and venturing into the twisties, it soon becomes apparent the Showa suspension stock settings were a tad soft for my taste. Once stopped, a few stiffening clicks of preload on top of the left fork leg, a few clicks of tensioning rebound on top of the right fork leg, 
and a few stiffening twists of the remote preload adjuster on the rear shock dial things in for tackling the road ahead. The 28-litre saddlebags are large enough to accommodate a full-face helmet, though without much room to spare. There is also a helmet lock if you need to secure your lid when the saddlebags are full of other incidentals. The ignition key unlocks the saddlebags and allow them to be removed from the motorcycle. For those requiring more storage, Kawasaki offers a matching 47-litre top case along with other accessories, such as heated grips and a GPS mount. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.